This bittersweet story begins with a young girl listening to the cool beats of hip hop from her older brother since before she can even remember. He was in high school, so she was lucky enough to be introduced to the 90s hip hop music of Biggie, Tupac, and Dr. Dre, just to name a few. At the age of eight, she was already rapping and dancing to her favorite songs and continued to do so over the years. This little girl was not so young anymore. She was now a young lady in high school and listening to her own generation's hip hop music. She listened to every genre, down to the not so popular country music. Her generation's hip hop was Ludacris, Eminem, 50 Cent, just to name a few. On her senior year of high school, she met a guy and they both fell head over heels for each other. Both were very into music. She was in Chamber Singers and he was in a group called Mad Money Click, MMC. When she would go to his house, he would automatically go straight into his studio. Funny thing is that his studio was actually inside his grandparents' motorhome. home. But hey, every rapper has to start somewhere. He and his group members encouraged her to join their group as a vocalist, so she did. Her first time in the studio was pure comedy, because she was so nervous to look dumb in front of her boyfriend. Then she got over her fear somewhat and they recorded their first song, over the soundtrack number one by Kanye West and Pharrell. Her boyfriend was so amped to enter MMC into any hip-hop festival they could find, but that never happened. Soon enough, MMC was graduating high school and the group fell apart. During that time, her boyfriend reintroduced her to Joe Budden and showed her what he was really about. This is the first time she ever heard mood music mixtapes and not that pump it up song he was only known for. He had lyrical magic and she fell quickly in love with him and the group called Slaughterhouse. Later that summer, her boyfriend got her a job with him and their co-workers gave them tickets to their first ever paid dupe. Chapter 2 They were ecstatic, Slaughterhouse with headlining. The atmosphere of the concert was incredible. It was so cool to hear lyrical talent and she fell in love. They spent the entire day listening to amazing new groups and when they were walking around from booth to booth, they saw a ton of MERS merchandise. They saw the lineup and MERS was next, and they wanted to see what he was all about, so they waited. Once he came out, she was so captivated by the way he made her feel, how he was so engaged in the crowd, and how he just did his thing. After the concert, they both went home and downloaded his music. They even went to the MERS for President signing at a mobile music store in Hollywood. These two young lovebirds became obsessed with hip hop. They even went to Rock the Bells Festival where they got to see Dr. Dre, Erica Badu, The Roots, Wu-Tang, Nas, and so many more. Hip hop became a bigger part of her music playlist. She became more lyrically conscious and began to view mainstream music or, or radio music as weak and untalented. She began to view Power 106 as a reason why Hip hop died, and seeing that the station was more for her club mixes than for her me her immediate music, she began writing poetry again. That was something she gave up a long time ago, but was so inspired to pick up a pen again. Chapter three. She felt that this music connected her more with her boyfriend and to a different group of people. Even though she had this newfound love and respect for hip hop, she also had her opinions about it too. Like, why weren't there more women spitting their thoughts and flows? Why if women are talked about or mentioned in more than 95% of music, were they always degraded? And how come real talent cannot be introduced as mainstream music? Listening to Lupe Fiasco's state-run radio and Merge the Science made me think twice about how the Americans' priorities are not really priorities and honestly just wrong. She sometimes viewed her relationship with hip-hop as that, a relationship. They had their ups and downs, but mainly the love stayed there. At the same time, she was also weighing her options in her own relationship with her boyfriend. The ups and downs over the years were, were soon overtaken by more downs than anything. They sadly broke up and ended on real bad terms. Chapter 4 Even though her and her boyfriend broke up, that did not mean she had to leave everything that came along with him in her past. Hip-hop was a part of her before him and admittedly became more because of him. She continued to update herself on underground music, which in fact made her feel closer to hip-hop. 
She now felt like it was up to her to follow her favorite artists and favorite festivals, which she did. She continued to go to Rock the Bells festivals and actually drove herself down this summer to San Diego to go see Murs at his set for the Comic Con. She has met him twice already and is admittedly waiting to meet Eminem one on one. This young woman has so many amazing memories tied to hip hop and can't wait to make more. And just like your first love, it'll always be a part of you. So this is what hip hop means to me. And thank you so much for watching.